fourth solo album, uh, Fantasia, is coming out or came out today, actually, I think. So uh, what were the sources of inspiration for you? The sources of inspiration, um, there are quite a few. Uh, with this particular release, um, I was inspired by an image before even laying down any music. It was an image that just came out of my deep from my own conscious. Uh, it was an image of um, uh, entangled uh, bodies, naked, violently and passionately embracing each other. And and I came across the term fantasie, uh, fantasie through um, my uh, um, readings in psychoanalysis. And, um, and so it has to do more with the psychoanalytic definition of fantasy um, spelled with a PH, not with an F. And um, it has to do more with um, childhood fantasy uh, that's rooted in your in infancy and how you attach to the objects in the world around you. And so um, the, that word and, and that image was the, the genesis of this album. And, um, and I thought to myself, well, now what I need to do is write the album that fits the image and the concept. So it was a much more top-down uh, way of approaching the writing as opposed to, you know, coming up with individual uh, tracks and putting them together and then seeing the concept after the fact. I had the concept first and then the music birthed out of that. I read that uh, this is your coldest and most sinister solo effort yet. So uh, how does this tie into with the inspiration sources? Well, that was actually my opinion of uh, what I think of the record in uh, comparison to the uh, earlier releases in my discography, which I felt were more romantic, melancholic, wistful uh, types of um, uh, releases. And um, this time it just, I mean, for the first, I mean, first of all, it was uh, my pandemic album. So I wrote this completely, almost completely under lockdown. So uh, it was a very bleak time. Not that the other albums weren't written in bleak moments, they absolutely were, but um, this one, I think just because I was so inspired by the glockenspiel, um, uh, you spoke to Ryan when uh, you had Ionophore on, on your, on your um, show, and uh, he lent me this glockenspiel, which is basically like a miniature steel xylophone. Uh, several years ago, um, he didn't have any room for it in his apartment. So um, I've been holding on to this thing for several years and it's made appearances on previous albums, but I thought there's so much more I could do with this instrument besides just setting it up next to a microphone and, and playing some notes. Um, so I discovered this on the most recent Ionophore album where I, I did a lot more with it, where I could really stretch the tones and make them sound um, really cold or really like, um, you know, with lots of low end or something more gourd-like uh, with, with a lot of overtones. And I thought to complement that, the brass parts, um, I stretched out to be these really low, ominous kind of tones. So uh, the cold sound, I think, sort of came spontaneously through experimenting with these instruments. And um, like I would say, this this album has more influence from Stravinsky's Firebird than, you know, maybe some of my previous influences, which were more kind of in the sort of 70s 
uh, proto ambient kind of uh, influences like uh, Harold Budd, Brian Eno, that sort of thing. Is there a spiritual side for your music? I, I think so. Um, I think the spirituality that uh, that I that's part of this is something that um, has less to do with religion and more to do with um, summoning up spirits from my past, um, ancestors, um, you know, whatever, uh, whatever stranger comes my way when I'm not, um, you know, when I'm not fu fully in the physical realm. <laughs> it's, um, it's a little hard to describe, but, um, but I do sense that there are uh, things out there that aren't part of our, um, our three-dimensional concrete physical world. So, um, and I think a lot of this spiritual sort of, you know, opening that I try to um, summon when I'm in that creative space is, um, you know, a lot of it comes through improvisation. So, um, so I try not to, I try not to think too hard ahead of time of what I want the lyrics to be necessarily. Uh, one, one thing that I've, um, that I've gotten, um, very, uh, interested in doing the past few years is to just press record with the microphone on and see what comes out. And I do this live as well. So, um, lyrical improvisation live is, is a big part of, uh, the performance as well. And... And I'm always interested in what I find. It's it's never something that I really expect. Um, there there's some lyrics on the record that um, just uh, have to do with psychic disintegration. Basically, you're um, you're in this devolving whether it's a, a, a struggle within yourself or a relationship that's gone south and you your your whole concept of yourself just starts to split apart and i didn't know i was going to write about these lyrics till i hit the record button and i thought oh okay well what's this about and then and then that idea led to the next thing led to the next thing so when i when i write when i uh write songs i usually start with a few uh kernels of ideas and then the rest of the album proliferates from those tracks which i call the mother tracks you know they kind of reproduce within themselves and um so there's so everything's tied together uh aesthetically conceptually um different different melodic motifs are, are shared and repurposed among the tracks so that that um that's something i i that's been my MO, I think, since the beginning is to take you on a journey so that you're um, you're enveloped by the whole experience. It's not there, there's not something that's jarring or that comes out of the blue, uh, but it's something that that's gradual and you're sinking deeper, deeper into it. Uh, you mentioned that the, uh, this is your pandemic album so how much did the situation affect this uh recording what do you think oh yeah absolutely um that that sensation of sort of um like myself coming apart at, uh, among the isolation was absolutely affected by the isolation that i felt in the pandemic um that that um uh spawned the uh the the conceptual ideas the melodic ideas that sense of emptiness you know that desolation um 
with nobody around. I mean, during the pandemic, there were, there were, uh, the streets were just so quiet, um, even in, in the busiest streets in the city. And you could actually hear birds and insects and, you know, all, all these creatures, you know, that you wouldn't normally hear if there are people around. So that, that was pretty special. So, um, so yeah, absolutely.